What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Red River Aviation. Hope you guys are on a fantastic day today. And today we have the late January 2020 Storyline Airport update for you guys. Hopefully you guys are excited for today's video. If you guys are, make sure to leave a like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell because you guys are not going to want to miss out on any content coming up, including this video. We are getting very close to 800 subscribers and I do not want you guys to miss any content coming. So. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss more videos like this. Monday is going to be an awesome control spotting video and you guys are going to want to be there for that. And next Friday, your, your guys' favorite and my favorite too, the Dallas Fort Worth International Airport will be coming your guys' way. So hopefully you guys are excited for that. Happy Friday to all you guys that are watching on Friday and anybody in the premiere. Thank you guys for being here. Hopefully you guys are excited for this video. We have a jam-packed Storyline Airport update. Um, this updates um, the best in a while for the Storyline Airport for sure. We have a whole scenario with the DFW diversions over there as you guys see in the tarmac. We have a brand new international terminal which I'm very excited to debut. It will be uh, Terminal C over there or Terminal E rather I guess you'd call it with how our terminals work. It's kind of confusing but yeah the camera battery hopefully doesn't die so might as well get started. We do have another partly cloudy environment today. It's similar to the Reno update from a couple weeks ago. So it kind of reminds me of summer and I'm excited for summer. More videos will be coming but anyways January is almost over and I guess we'll get into the last update for the Storyline Airport this month and we're going to be getting the exact same spot. Uh, these videos are probably going to progressively start getting as long as Dallas because I mean we're upwards of probably around 75 models so um, I don't think there's any new ones I do have seven on order so hopefully they get here soon Let me just put the tripod like that so it's even anyways uh, currently pulling in I do have the new route uh, sheet as well that's another thing that I was going to talk about make sure to go vote link in the bio uh, once the video is concluded so you guys can help influence the future of the airport um, Walter's decisions with charters and things will have a big impact in future episodes Excuse me, but I do have the brand new route map. I mean, it's big. I can't. It's big. <laughs> There's a lot of routes there. So, anyways, uh, pulling in after arrival on the runway. Here we have an American Airlines Airbus 819 LUS, and he is making a flight in. A um, lot of new routes for American Delta. Just going to say it now. Uh, the other airlines did expand as well, but American Delta have a big presence now too. He's arriving in from Charlotte, which is 3A320s. Three, three uh, three, two A319s, two A321s, and 1737 a day, so as you can tell, the route is progressing quickly. Spirit Airbus E319, the digital paint scheme. Uh, he's coming in from, I uh, can't find Spirit. They're on the list somewhere here. Why am I struggling to find Spirit? Southwest, Frontier, Allegiant. I legitimately think I've forgotten. Well, I have the other sheet anyway. Uh, I'm surprised I forgot him, but anyways, so Spirit uh, E319 is heading off to uh, Minneapolis after a from Los Angeles. Sorry about that little um, delay. I completely forgot. United Airbus, or I'm just Spirit on the fly. Uh, United, Airbus, United Boeing 737 Nash Eco Skies. United, United also has a couple new flights. He's off to Denver today um, after arrival in from none other than Houston which United's flights consist of uh, Denver is three 737 800s and 900s and two CRJ 550s and then our um, Houston flights is 1757 300 3737 800s and 1737-900 uh, behind the cargo terminal here we have a JetBlue Airbus A320 and stripes stripe tail let's at least get a fair view here Anyways, he's pulling in from um, Fort Lauderdale. We'll be heading out to uh, Long Beach. Uh, three daily us A through twenties for both those flights. We have our cargo section. UPS Boeing 767-300. Uh, they fly to Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, Louisville, Chicago, Rockford, and Ontario. Anyways, he's going off to Ontario after out from Chicago, Rockford, and a FedEx Express Boeing 757-200 freighter. Flights to Memphis, Houston, Orlando, and LAX. He's heading out to Los Angeles after out from Houston to change the scenery some or the flights. Delta Airbus E319. Uh, he's coming in from Detroit 4717s, 28319s after arrival from 
Did I not write the 8th to 19 again? Uh, we'll send them off to Los Angeles as a bonus flight. Usually it's just 1757. South Carolina's Boeing 737-700 and Triple Crown 1 paint scheme. So excited to get Nash, um, the, tri or the Tennessee 1, not Nashville 1. But anyways, uh, a lot of questions about this. Yes, I do have a lot of mo models on order. I'm still waiting on Sun Country 737 NG models. Then from the Gemini Jets releases, I got the Tennessee 1 737 Southwest, two United Amber 175s in the new livery, United 819, and then from NG models releases, I got the American Airbus A321 in the A321 stand the Cancer. So hopefully those will be coming in soon. Maybe you can fit in another mass unboxing out of those. Anyways, the Triple Crown 1 is off to all flight, or there's only four flights on here that are two daily. The majority of the flights right now are three daily. Coming in from Las Vegas and we'll make the flight up to Los Angeles. Maryland 1, Boeing 737-800. We'll do them on one of the two daily flights. Send out to Milwaukee after all from San Diego. And we will uh, head over to our low-cost terminal. Kind of low-cost Southwest. Kind of shouldn't be in this department, but that's kind of where they fit in. So this is obviously the Allegiant Southwest and Frontier Terminal. Allegiant has a couple new flights as well. So there are only two H-21 flights are daily. Um, obviously, you have to consider Frontier. They're not going to fly daily everywhere, even though this one, they're bigger hubs. Uh, the only two A321 flights are Orlando and Denver, so that A321 is going off to Orlando after all from Denver. Everything else is three weekly A320s, Tulsa, Pensacola, Houston, Philadelphia, Las Vegas, San Jose, Albuquerque, O'Hare, Newark. I think three of those are new, San Jose, Newark, and O'Hare. So, uh, Beginning with Georgia, the painted bunny, he's off to Newark after all from um, Chicago O'Hare. Then we have Wilbert the Whitetail off to... Philadelphia after out from Pensacola, followed by Colorado the Bighorn Sheep off to Tulsa after out from Las Vegas. And then we have the 821 I just said. And then we have a um, Flower the Painted Bunny, or not Flower to Flower to Hummingbird off to San Jose after out from Tulsa. Legion Airbus E318. Allegiant does have one new flight. Uh, which is St. Petersburg, so he's off to St. Petersburg after arrival from Los Angeles. And then we have our big southwest section, so we have three 737-700s in variety. We have a Canyon Blue 737-700 off to Midway, uh, Chicago Midway after arrival from Houston Hobby. We have a Colorado One Boeing 737-700 off to Dallas Love Field after arrival from Kansas City. And then we uh, Colorado one I just said and then the new heart livery or not new but the heart livery is off to Nashville after all from MCO all those three daily followed by pushing back we have a Canyon blue 737 700 off to Portland after rival from Phoenix and then behind their horrible view so I kind of need to scoot over for deltas anyways um, gotta be careful there's a new airport in the back so I don't want to show it but yes the construction on the new airport has begun I'm uh, very excited to debut that with you guys when the opportunity, or when it's complete. 737-800 uh, Southwest off to, we'll go with Denver after arrival from San Antonio. Next we have Delta um, with the International Terminal. Uh, Iceland Air and Aeromexico have moved out, so it is exclusive Delta. This is where all Delta domestic flights are hosted. The international gates have been terminated, even though those gates at the end are open um, for whatever. All international flights do arrive at the international terminal, and uh, Delta may have a couple flights leave out of these gates. Rarely it's going to happen, but I know some airports do that. Uh, there are a couple custom gates still back there, so it is possible. So. Same thing for American, and there's a couple gates over there at United that possibly will have new flights. So, here we have a Delta Airbus A321 off to Atlanta after arrival from Minneapolis. Atlanta goes as um, A321 daily, A320, two CS100s, an MD88, and a 717. Minneapolis is the exact same. The only difference is that there's no A321, and it's three CS100s instead. So, yeah. Delta 737-800 off to Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City consists of five 737-800s a day that's really emerged. 
uh, and two 737-900s, so very beneficial routes. So obviously, it's off to Salt Lake City are only scheduled 737-800 in the airport. Followed by Delta McDonald's in the 88 off to, he's also going to Atlanta today after arrival from a little filler flight. He's um, making a very rare flight to Seattle today with, or arriving from Seattle, which is rare for them to be out there. But, you know, it's the fictional airport. We might as well should make do with what we have and make some cool changes. Uh, this gate it's kind of, was kind of funky. Going Delta Airbus A320, um, going off to. We're gonna give Boston an upgrade today, so he's off to Boston after arrival from. Um, Orlando is also gonna get an upgrade. Uh, go over those flights because they're regional. When we get to that section in a moment. Delta 717 off to Detroit after arrival from um, uh, LaGuardia will get an upgrade. And then Delta CS100 off to Atlanta after arrival from, we'll go with Detroit for him. So the regionals, as you can tell, there's quite a few. Two E170s, a CRJ 700, and a CRJ 900. The E-Jet e present in C-Jet for Delta has expanded drastically, so... Beginning with Seattle's five daily Ember 170s normally, Boston three Ember 170s, two CRJ 900s, LaGuardia's five, or yeah, five CRJ 900s, John F. Kennedy, New York, new route, five Ember 170s, um, Orlando, five CRJ 700s, new, and then Dallas, Fort Worth's new as well, three CRJ 700s. So we have a Delta CRJ 900 off to New York, LaGuardia after arrival from Boston. Followed by CRJ-700 heading off to Orlando after arrival from Dallas-Fort Worth. Then we have two Ember 170s. The first is heading out to New York JFK after arrival from Boston. The second is heading out to Seattle after arrival from... Did I forget a flight? Um, nevertheless, we're going to go with uh, John F. Kennedy for him as well. And then we have the American Airlines terminal. Uh, the only heavy gate there. Again, this American terminal only hosts domestic and as you can tell... I didn't elaborate on this yet, but we have the whole um, Ember line or the whole RJ lineup, which this is. Uh, they currently have six gates right here. This is uh, kind of the best I can do with um, their expansion, so they're kind of out in the open right now. Uh, Delta Connection flights may park in the corner back there too. I haven't decided yet, so we'll see. So American Airlines Boeing 787 9 nine uh, currently loading up passengers with service off to Dallas Fort Worth. Two daily 757s, five daily MD-80s, and two daily 787-8s or 9s. It depends on the day. Followed by an American Airlines Boeing 737-800 in the Air Cal Heritage Retro Paint Scheme. Off to Washington, D.C.A. after arrival from Philadelphia. D.C.A. is five daily 737s, and Philadelphia is five seven, two 757s and three 737s. American Airlines Airbus E321. Excited to get the NG models. I think it's going to be really nice with the Wi-Fi box and stuff. Plus, that A321 kind of needs some friends besides the Neos that I'm using as A321s. Anyways, that uh, A321 is going off to Miami after arrival from Los Angeles. Miami is two A321s, one A321 Neo, and two 737s. Los Angeles is two, uh, one A321 Neo, one 800 and two daily A321s. So good fluctuation there in some American hubs. American Airlines Boeing 757-200. I feel like this perspective would be cool for it. Uh, American 757-200. Uh, he's off to Chicago here today after arrival from New York, John F. Kennedy. Um, I already said Philadelphia's flights. Uh, John F. Kennedy is three daily 757s and one daily 737. American Airlines Airbus A320. Anyways, he's uh, loading up passengers today with service off to A320. Charlotte, after arrival from... A little substitution on the Phoenix service. Um, so, Charlotte, as I said, uh, 3A through 20s, 2A through 19s, 2A through 21s, 
LUS or uh, AAL just depends. One seven thirty seven. Phoenix is usually a A three thirty two hundred now, so a big upgrade there. Two seven thirty sevens and a A three twenty one. Yeah, so little bonus flight. Pretend it's the holidays with some of these extra different flight services. We'll we'll knock out our new regional section. So as you can tell, a lot of RJs that I know you guys would love to have. If you guys didn't know, Aero Classics did release a Spirit Airbus A319, the digital digital livery. So if you guys are really looking for a Spirit, it's out and about for Aero Classics. So whatever retailers you guys can go to, it's coming out this month. So whenever it's out, I'll make sure to put it on Instagram for you guys so you guys can go get your hands on it. Anyways, we have a lot of RJs here. So we're going to begin with the Ember 175s, which fly two daily. All these are two daily, by the way. Las Vegas, San Diego, Orlando, and Tulsa. So we have an Ember 175 off to Las Vegas after all from Orlando. And then the Ember 170, which is Ember 175 today pretty much, off to Tulsa after arrival from San Diego. Followed by the Ember 140, the 145s, all two daily once again. Oklahoma City, Cleveland, Ohio, Tampa, Florida, Austin, Texas, Denver, Colorado, and Atlanta, Georgia. So we're going to begin with the Ember 140. He's off to Cleveland after arrival from um, Austin. Then the next Ember 145 off to Oklahoma City after arrival from Cleveland. Followed by the last Ember 145 heading out to Denver after arrival from Tampa. And then finally we have a CRJ 200 at the end. There's a ton of CRJ 700s taxing out or two. So a couple CRJ 700s taxing out. But the CRJ 200 flies to Pensacola and Destin, Fort Watton Beach. So a little Florida turnaround. So obviously heading out to Pensacola after arrival from Destin, Fort Watton Beach. Um, I'm going to save the international terminal and the diversions towards the end. So... Let's see, 17 minutes. Yeah, hopefully you guys are enjoying the video. If you haven't already, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, turn on the notification bell, follow me on Instagram for extra content, and yeah, so you guys would know when the videos are coming out and stuff. So, um, we got a decent view, it's not great. I did fit in an extra gate at, on this side of the terminal because we kind of needed it, so we made it work. Another American Airlines, there was A321 Neo. Or the first of this update, rather. Anyways, he's going off to Los Angeles after arrival from Phoenix. Followed by two McDonald's MD-80s, looking fine as ever. First sent out to Dallas after arrival from Chicago. The second's going off to O'Hare after arrival from Dallas. And then, really bad views, I'm sorry, but we have a, a 737, A321 LUS, and an A318. The 737's off to Phoenix after arrival from LaGuardia. LaGuardia actually has an MD-80, so one of those MD-80's going to LaGuardia as well. After arrival from, or I'm sorry, and then the uh, LaGuardia services an MD-80 and two 737's. A321 LUS heading off to Charlotte after arrival from Phoenix. Or scratch Phoenix substitute with uh, Los Angeles. And we have an A319 LUS heading off to Chicago O'Hare, which is next A319 after arrival from. Uh, shoot. We'll say another flight to Dallas, just keep the train. We have a couple models I didn't get. American MD-80 off to Gloria after out from Dallas. And some killer lighting we have. Clouds are still present, kind of. Not as many, but you know, they're still there. I have a new camera idea. I'm also gonna talk about the end, but hopefully the video is decent. 757-200 off to Philadelphia after arrival from New York JFK. We have another 757-200 off to O'Hare after out from Dallas. Um, United Airbus E319 coming in from Washington DCA, which is a new flight after out from Newark, which is also a new flight. So pretty sweet. Um, we'll uh, leave it there and we'll get the Alaskas. So using a, quite a lot of zoom. Here we have an Alaska Q400. Anyways, he's currently loading up passengers. Uh, service change for Alaska, a couple. 
He's off the Boise after out from Reno. Reno's three daily Q400s and Boise's two daily Q400s. Alaska Emerald 175 and some pretty exceptional lighting. Really good job on camera. Looks pretty gosh darn good from how far away I am. Anyways, he's off to New York City, which is two daily Emerald 175s after out from San Jose, which is a new flight, so pretty awesome stuff there. Alaska Boeing 737-900ER. He's currently loading up passengers today with service off to Seattle. Five daily 737-900s. And he arrived from Seattle as well. Um, I'm going to get the rest of these taxiing because I don't want to come back to this spot um, with all the planes that we still have. So, I mean, I will for the international, but I still have to go get domestic. So... American Boeing 737-800-TWA Retro Heritage Train Scheme off to San Francisco two daily 737s. I think that is a new flight after arrival from DCA. Another 737-800. This is our one world paint scheme. He's going to go off to Dallas as another flight. An extra flight, rather. Uh, Dallas has a couple of 737s mixed in there. It depends on day. After arrival from Philadelphia. Just making sure I get all the routes right. Pretty awesome model. United Boeing 757-300 finally flying actual flights since this airport. He's arriving in from Houston. He's going to make the return flight. Uh, I already said the frequencies earlier. So Here's our two Sierra Data 700s. Once again, all two daily. Uh, so we have San Antonio, Kansas City, St. Louis, and Boston. So uh, first is heading out to San Antonio after out from Boston. Second is heading out to St. Louis after out from Kansas City. So big American Eagle jump. Pretty sweet to see. I think it's awesome. I will give a look at the DFW divergence, but I'm going to elaborate more on this when we get back to here. So here's our divergence from Dallas. Uh, they had a big storm, and I'll talk about more when we get back to this proximity. So let's try to make our way over to the other side without leaking the new airport because that's supposed to be a surprise oh barely missed it oh there goes the gate uh okay we missed it all right so lots of chesters if you can't tell i mean a ton of chesters i'll go handheld when we go over there uh to get the views of the back planes on the back Anyways, we'll just go in order. So we have a A319. Yeah, that's A319. He's loading up passengers. We'll service off to San Diego after arrival from San Diego. Two daily A319s. Followed by A320. Loading up with service off to Washington Dulles after arrival from San Jose, which is a new flight. Or not San Jose, my bad. Cabo St. Lucas, my bad. Uh, in Mexico. Then we have a Boeing 737-800, which is making the flight out to Portland after I'm from San Francisco. Portland's three daily 737-800s and um, lost my spot. San Francisco's two daily 737-800s. And then we have some United Sierra Day-750s right here. The first is off to Denver after I'm from Washington Dulles, which is four daily CRJ 550s now. The second's off to Chicago O'Hare, which is three daily after arrival from, for say, DCA as an extra flight. So now it's time to go handheld without leaking the airport. So I'm going to take the sheet because I kind of need it to make sure I don't miss anything. So hopefully, do don't have to blur out the airport. I probably should have. It's fragile right now, so I don't want to put it up, but... Okay, United A320. Currently loading up passengers with service off to... There goes another gate. Why not? Oh, this game is very fidgety, fragile, sensitive, whatever word you want to use. Trying to fix it. Okay. Slowly but surely, almost, bingo, that's just a little scenario I guess, I don't know. 
United 8 through 20, loading up with service off to Los Angeles after I from San Francisco. I think both of those are new. Three daily, 8 through 19s or 20s, depends on the day. United 737, 800 off to Denver after I from, we'll go with uh, Chicago, which is usually Airbuses, but United 8 through 19 off to Newark after arrival from San Francisco. All uh, the majority of those, all three daily eight through nineteen slash twenties. Two spirits. We have eight through nineteen, eight through twenty, uh, eight through nineteens off to. We'll add Myrtle Beach as a new flight after arrival from Dallas. Second, the eight through twenty ones off to Los Angeles after arrival from. We'll go with Houston IH as a new flight. The Amber One Ninety's back and with new service. JetBlue eight through twenty one off to. Uh, JFK after out from Boston, both those now four daily on the 321. JetBlue number 190 off to Orlando after out from DCA, both those new flights, pretty sweet. Uh, two daily number 190s. And we, I think we made it without leaking the airport, so pretty awesome stuff. Now let's go talk about the diversions. So American, or Dallas Fort Worth had a huge thunderstorm which uh, caused multiple flights to divert to the storyline airport so we're going to go over those right now as soon as I get the chair back okay so beginning at the end we have a Emirates Boeing 777-300 ER and he was off from Dubai yeah Dubai to Dallas Fort Worth and he had to divert obviously due to the thunderstorm um, unloading one at a time, we weren't quite prepared for the huge diversion. So you guys want diversions, so we got plenty of them. Qatar Airways A350-1000 also made an appearance in a previous update back last year. Uh, going from Doha to Dallas, had to divert. American Boeing 777-200ER in the One World Paint Scheme. He was flying from Frankfurt to Dallas, and he had to divert as well. Lutons Air Airbus A330-200, uh, finally deplaning. He was going from um, Frankfurt also to Dallas, and he had to divert. Now, you guys are probably wondering what's the KLM 777-300s here. Uh, the thunderstorms are just starting to roll into Houston, so he had to divert after he was flying from Houston to um, Dallas. Or, sorry, Houston to um Flying from Amsterdam to Houston. So hopefully you guys like the diversions. I think they were a nice touch. A lot of these will start making appearances in the airports or in this airport um, as international. Um, as you guys see that terminal in the back? That's an expansion to the international terminal that just got constructed. So um, yeah, we're growing drastically. And I probably need to get another couple fold-up tables because I'm already running out of options for what I can do. But yeah, that's kind of where our ramp is, so we just put them there. So, and ladies and gentlemen, let me debut to you guys the brand new Porsche first portion of the international tournament. The international con tournament consists of seven to eight gates, depending on the day. Uh, just depends on what aircraft you park where. More aircraft could park here if you wanted to, but. Yeah, all international flights have been moved to this tournament, luckily, and it's exciting. A lot of international flights just started for the airport, so I'm excited to go over them. Beginning with this first one, new route for Aero Mexico. Uh, Spirit also had a couple new flights, or sorry, JetBlue had the two new flights, so that's where the vote is. Make sure to go vote once the video is complete. Uh, the airlines will be different compared to what we had, so. Air Mexico Boeing 737-700 have included this model in the airport on this channel, I don't think. It's just been the collection videos, so it's exciting to finally get it in the airport. Anyways, he's coming in from Cancun on a new three daily services on 737-700, and we'll be making a return flight shortly. Followed by a Air Canada Ember 170 in the new livery. Love this model. Sorry about the gate. Anyways, he's currently loading up passenger service out to Toronto Pearson, uh, which is two Ember 170s. And then we start a new flight to Vancouver as well, so he'll be making the flight back to Vancouver. One daily Ember 170, one CRJ705, so pretty sweet. Air Mexico Boeing 737-800 with splits, pushing back the service off to Mexico City, which is five daily 737-800, so that's pretty gosh darn impressive. Now, I do want to talk about some of the American carriers that with their 
international flights. Um, so American Delta specifically has some flights uh, that are just a couple times weekly um, with their alterations. Uh, this airport has a rule to where if you're starting a route within the first three months, if it's an international route on a narrow body aircraft, that it has to be three times weekly. You can call me dumb or whatever, but I, uh, Walter thought that that was a rule that needed to be implemented into the airport. So beginning within three months and every update's three months in this cycle. So some of these routes may turn into daily depending, but if the route starts for the first three months, it has to be three times weekly. So that kind of explains why Iceland Air was three times weekly. And that's why stuff following will be turning into it. So uh, the um, wide bodies do not count. It's just for the narrow bodies. So the Iceland Air Boeing 757-200 in the 80th anniversary delivery has just got his upgrade to um, daily service to Reykjavik. So there goes that. Delta 757-200 moves over from a, he just arrived domestically from Los Angeles and he's going to be making a flight out to, they have two new flights starting since uh, international flights are finally pretty much a thing now. So Delta flies three daily, or three weekly rather, sorry, to Mexico City and Cancun. So the flight today is heading out to Mexico City, which is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday is the... Um, Cancun service no domestic flights in the first three months or no international flights in the first three months on Sunday as well so that's kind of how that works American Airbus A321 Neo uh, flying off to why is this not on the sheet anyways it was Cancun regardless uh, which is that's American's only narrow body international flight at the moment which is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Monday, Thursday, Saturday, whatever. Um, I'll, we'll go with Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Followed by an American Airlines Airbus E330-200, finally got this off the shelf with the 300 and decided to include it as the first flight to London Heathrow, which is a daily E330-200, and sometimes 777s, it really just depends on the day, you know. And then it's competing flight right next to it is the British Airways Boeing 777-300. They kind of work together, obviously, since they're in the One World Alliance. Anyways, he's off the London Heathrow as well. One daily 777-300ER. And the expansion is expected to be complete by in three months, which is the next update. So, finally, not to say in a bad way, but 32 minutes later, the Storyline Airport has been completely updated uh, with a lot of new additions so hopefully you guys liked it the diversions and stuff we'll do more um, major and more dominant uh, surrounded idea scenarios but this was kind of obviously not necessarily rushed but definitely not the most paced out update for these guys so anyways they're um, flying off back to Dallas went in Houston for the respective KLM flight once they get a opportunity to do so so that's kind of where we're at with that so overall another update complete it was good I enjoyed it and hopefully you guys enjoyed watching it as well so um, a lot of stuff coming to the Storyline Airport obviously then another expansion to the International Terminal it will be front and back and it will be huge and big um a lot of routes are going to be starting for american delta and united i think even wants to get into the international mix so you guys can expect that and uh sun country is going to be coming soon uh you guys can vote on new airlines or new routes for airlines um we'll go with i'm trying to i really want better questions so i'm going to leave another question on this tab or another question on what you guys want to see for new questions because I know the routes it really doesn't work that well anymore since we're not three gates anymore like we started last April so this airport's already coming up on a year we'll go with Frontier Allegiant versus I'm not going to do the dominant carriers because it really doesn't make much sense uh, Alaska uh, we'll go with JetBlue to get another opportunity to that's a really, this is a really bad comparison, but 
Uh, if any of you guys played the uh, Madden NFL sports game for the consoles or even PC, uh, you guys may have heard of what's called a franchise mode. And it's pretty much a mode where you'll take your NFL team through seasons, for say. But they have one mode. I do watch in my spare time sometimes. But they have one mode that's called... Um, or they have in franchise mode scenarios pretty much where... A NFL player gets a for say breakout opportunity, which is um, they have what's called development. Pretty much, it just makes your player better, etc. But nevertheless, that's kind of what I'm doing for the airport. Uh, and JetBlue is just getting back-to-back -back opportunities to do so. So I think I'll ask this question. It's not necessarily in new routes, but which airline is going to have the more focal point, uh, bigger emphasis to grow? faster than the next airline. United's kind of got some new flights just started, but JetBlue and Aeromexico got their benefits of doubts, and Aeromexico's got a bright future. Unfortunately, the I looked on radar, the 757 I have, the 767-200 in the Sky Team livery, and the, uh, what was the, the other model I had? No, it was just the 737s and the M 190 so those two don't fly anymore, so I'm not sure uh, if I'll buy a new Aero Mexican model or not. Um, 787 looks nice, I don't know, we'll see, maybe another NG. Um, I also want to look at maybe some Air Canada heavies, not just, probably just for this airport, I obviously don't have an airport yet that files those, but I still think it would be uh, pretty sweet. Interjet would be nice. Um, obviously, a lot to go over. Um, I'm going to orientate the internationals around Dallas, and then those will fluctuate in, obviously, into the Storyline Airport. So, long update complete. Thank you guys so much for watching the whole video. If you enjoyed, please leave a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. You're not going to want to miss an epic contrail spotting video coming your guys' way next week. It's jam-packed with some pretty rare stuff and some catches that I finally got back in contrail spotting. I filmed it, and it's it's pretty surreal. You guys are going to enjoy it. Hopefully, you guys are excited for the next video and uh, that video and more stuff to come. Let's go get 800 subscribers, so please subscribe. Leave a comment on what you thought on the video. Don't forget to go vote. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video. Red River Aviation is signing off. Yo, we're very excited here at Storyline International Airport to announce the brand new International Terminal at the airport. This terminal features many luxurious amenities including first class, business class lounges, as well as roomy areas for passengers to wait at, nice restaurants, and many new airlines to be coming in the future. This terminal will be housing all international flights from the airport including airlines such as Air Canada, Iceland Air, Air Mexico, American, Delta, United, and many other domestic international airline flights that will be very happy to serve you and to take you to where you are ex most excited to go to for your destination, vacation, or business travel. We hope that the new tunnel serves you and your customers very well. Thank you for choosing Storyline International Airport. As you can tell at the Storyline International Airport, the new international terminal has really opened up a whole new window of opportunities for airlines already at the airport and new airlines to come into the economy and make a difference. However, in this instance, Walter gets an email from Delta Airlines CEO Ed Bastin wondering if he could expand his international uh, operations out of the Storyline International Airport. Already having two flights to Cancun and Mexico City, three weekly, he wants to expand even more and have more than just one gate to work with. And that is what he leaves the email to, just such as Doug Parker did in the past, but this time in a whole new capacity with international flights. Delta trying to take over and be the main airline at the Storyline Airport as American is number one currently. Let's see what the following has to say from Ed. Good day to you, Walter Stone. It is Ed Bassin, obviously the CEO of Delta Airlines. Um, as you know, we have had a very big presence at the airport domestically for the longest time, but we have finally wanted to expand with the new international terminal into something even more than just our domestic services. As you know, thank you for letting us start our two flights to Mexico City and Cancun, but we want to expand even more into Mexico and then possibly into Europe as well. So we were wondering what you'd have to say about this and if Gates would accommodate to let us do this. We also have our Sky Team partner, 
Aero Mexico already at the airport, and they're also doing dividends with their Mexico City and brand new Cancun service. And we also want to expand them and get them some new routes too. So through the Sky Team Alliance, maybe even bring in some more airlines, KLM, and many others, possibly to expand the whole airport into a whole new dimension on the behalf of the Sky Team Alliance and Delta Airlines. I was wondering what you'd have to say about this and if you thought that it would make for a good economy. And uh, possibly we could discuss the future of Delta International Service at the airport. Thank you for the great domestic service that we already have. We really appreciate it. And obviously, we want to keep growing at the Storyline Airport, not just internationally, but also domestically. Thank you for your time, Walter, and I'll be eager to see what you have to say.